Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our uh, investigation into building a virtual joystick, which we can then use uh, in a lot of games to control various parameters of the game. Before continuing with this joystick, I want to review a few things we did the last uh, two tutorials. First one is the ActiveX spin button, which in a regular form is powered by a very simple macro. The name of the macro, which is in this case param1, is followed by the underscore and change, followed by, of course, this uh, round parenthesis. And inside, we can do anything with this parameter. We can put it in some formulas. But in this case, I made a simple example where we print the parameter in cell B8. And if we look here, this is a property of the button we use. So this is a button here. Okay. And the property of the button is uh, right here. It has a name, which in this case is param1. You choose the name. And the macro will have the same name, must have the same name, followed by the underscore and change. And there's also um, a delay, which can be anywhere between anything you want, but I would not recommend going below 20 milliseconds. In this case, we chose 50 milliseconds. Also, there's two parameters, a minimum and a maximum. Param can go in increments of 1 between these two. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, 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 8, 9. The second version is uh, the spin button with rollover feature. I created this name. It's the previous button, except when it goes to maximum, if you click up again, it doesn't get stuck to that value. It will jump to the minimum. So if parameter is greater than 9, then parameter will go to 0. Or if you keep clicking the, the lower arrow, when the parameter goes to minimum, to 0, it will jump back to maximum, to 9. It's a rollover. I can show you right here. You see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then click again, 0, 1, 2, it repeats. If you go down 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then jumps to 9, it's a rollover. The third version has a lookup table inside, and uh, let me see. It has a rollover feature and also has a look lookup table. We define an array. Called, uh, called param3 array. You can call it anything you want. And then you define the array as array, open parentheses, and put certain values here. It can be anything. It can be numerical, it can be text, it can be boolean, it can be many different things. In this case, we chose a combination between numerical and text. As the parameter varies between 0 and 9, you go through these values. So when parameter 0, you choose this one in cell B9. So you use parameter as an argument in this array. So let's see how it works. Now parameter is 0. It chooses 1.234. Parameter is 1, chooses this value, 2.456. Parameter is 2, it chooses the text, this is a test. Then Wu, 4, written 4. Then when it's 5, it chooses param 3, which is 5. Then 6 then 7.77, and so on and so forth. And this being said, let's go to our joystick. What we did for this joystick, I'm going to show you right here. First, we need to define a function. Okay, this is a standard function in the library user32, which any Windows machine has. So this function is, is uh, called uh, get cursor position, get cursor pose. This is a dedicated name, you cannot change it. And that's how you define it. Declare function lib user32. Here there's two strings. This is a text. This you can put any text. And here this is a name of a variable. It's a special variable. Look, you, you need to give a proper name, which means something that makes sense. Since this function retrieves the coordinates of the cursor xy, I name this cursor underscore x, y. And this is a structure because the function will deposit, every time it's called, the function will deposit the x and y coordinates of the cursor in this structure. Then you have to de declare the structure. Okay, so this name here and this name are the same. Okay, so you declare a structure. The structure has two components, an x component for the x position of the cursor and y component. So this structure has two components. Then we declare a variable cc cc comes from i made this up is is my name that i gave this name it's a reference point for the center of the joystick so we declare this uh, cc variable as a structure of the type cursor xy so it has two component xx and yy so if you look here for instance you see cc 
dot xx which means you retrieve the x coordinate of the cc here cc dot yy also we declare a boolean variable to be able to obtain this uh, function of start pause or on off for the macro so we, de we declare on off again this is my name i, I uh, chose this name as boolean so the macro is just a normal macro it start with the sub ends with n sub the name this is the name i made up detect absolute coordinates and the first we introduce this toggle toggle the logic variable on off from on from uh, true to false or vice versa and then we write an infinite loop a do loop which starts with do ends with loop but the special loop which means a conditional do loop which has do while a certain condition is true which means on off is true so inside what do we do we retrieve the cursor position in variable cc and cc is what is a cursor x y structure the function this function from user 32 library deposits two numbers every time the loop runs during each iteration this function special function deposits two number an x coordinate and a y coordinate in the structure called cc and then we use cell b5 and b uh, c5 to print the x coordinate of the mouse and the y coordinate of the mouse with minus sign why minus because um, the origin of the mouse coordinate is from this corner of the screen this uh, northwest corner of the screen and the x increases moving from the left to the right and the y vertical coordinate increasing going downward so because of this i for the vertical coordinate i chose a minus is more intuitive here there is is a counter that increasing by increases by one increments one every time the loop is is uh, goes through an iteration and also i print in a certain range a rolling history of the position of the previous position of the mouse let me show you how this goes So I start it here from here, I can stop it from here. I want to modify this, I want to make it better, I want to make a real um, joystick. So for this, I'm gonna show you the an old file that has a joystick right here. This is how it's supposed to work. I click in the middle here, and uh, the joystick sticks to my cursor. And if I click again, it stops it. But in this, uh, in these cells here, I get the relative coordinates with respect to this point. So check this out. This very varies. Every time I go far away, it goes to a large number. Here they are limited by 100, 100. So I'm going to close this. This is what we want to do. And I'm going to first move our copy, move it to the end, create a copy, call it joystick number two. And uh, for this, I also need to go to Visual Basic Editor and insert a module. The module for the first part of the joystick in uh, see joystick underscore one is in module one. You need to put this in a module. You cannot put it in an uh, Excel object here, sheets, because, because of this uh, declaration, special function. Insert module. We can call this, um, you can change the name, we can go to uh, properties view properties window and instead of module 2 we can rename it um, joy stick so we take the code from module 1 so control C go in joystick paste it what do we need to do here we this right now the way it is right now it retrieves the absolute coordinates in order to retrieve the relative coordinates of the cursor with respect to an initial click point. We need to copy this, okay? Copy and put it outside the loop. Control V. And transfer these coordinates not to B5, C5. Let's transfer them to a variable called uh, CO. So the central of the cursor, the reference point. X. Okay? And uh, C O Y. OK. 
Okay, let's remove this minus. So right now, before the loop started, we click somewhere on a button or on a chart, and it will remember the x and y coordinate of the of the click point. And again, we need to also pick up this control C, use the function before because right now we don't have the coordinates. We need to use the function get cursor position CC and then CO. So the initial click point coordinates are here. Then during each loop cycle, we do the same thing. But this time we need the relative coordinates to the initial click point. So from the current coordinates we get during each loop cycle, we need to subtract the initial click point coordinates. And um, forget about this, we don't need any trailing history. This is good. Let's see how it works. We go here and uh, Assign macro, oh here, joystick, detect absolute coordinate. Actually we should uh, name it a detect relative coordinate. So let's not do anything, let's go here to joystick and say uh, just joystick, detect, detect relative coordinates, okay, joystick. So let's see, oops, debug, okay, so it doesn't like something, COY, okay, here is the problem, CC, okay, something is moving, so what we need to do is delete this, okay, delete this, chart, remove the title, make it from, um, from a format axis from minus 100 to plus 100 and also make this one from minus 100 to plus 100 okay let's make the chart smaller and I want to have let me see let's look here inside so we plot in B5, C5, let's see, B5, C5, right here. This is 0, 0, we keep this 0, 0. So check this out. The data for this, let's assign macro to the chart, call the detect relative coordinates, and check this out. The problem is the Y the y coordinate has to be negative in order to to have the right movement so i'm going here and say minus and here plus plus okay so check this out i run here you see it's following my cursor is exceeding my cursor actually so we need to make the chart much smaller So now it's pretty good. The only problem I would like to limit it when I go out, it should be limited to 100. Okay, the, my axes are uh, between minus 100 plus 100. I would li like to limit it from to one between minus 100 and plus 100. So in order to do that, I need to do the following. The formula can be very complicated because if there's a positive value, there's a negative value. So what I want to do is essentially instead of this i want to extract the absolute value from this number so regardless of the sign should be the same positive number i think ibs abs okay and also a, a extract an absolute value from this and in order to keep the sign we need to copy this times apps let's put sign s g n okay so let's see if it works s g n so copy this vba functions let's see 
it works okay good there's a problem it's not limited so in order to limit this I want to say <coughs> max okay no minimum minimum so min of this and okay there is no minimum you need to use this this formulation application dot mean okay application dot mean uh, this works so which means we use a worksheet a spreadsheet function that doesn't exist in VBA but if we put application dot we can use that function okay sometimes you can use worksheet function function worksheet but i like application very simple and here the same control v so we want to limit this value the apps of this uh, this x value to 100 so we put minimum of this and 100 and here let's copy this control c actually no, let's let's do this So this should be limited to 100. You see here? It doesn't go past 100. It goes to negative value. It's limited to minus 100. Okay, sideways movement. Minus 100 plus 100. So this is our um, joystick. And... click on chart we start it click again we stop it always click in the middle otherwise you might have problem if you start it by clicking here you know you you have some problems so you need to click in the middle so the mouse the joystick head stays under the cursor another thing we can do so essentially what I'm doing here I'm giving the chart a facelift I change some colors some dimensions and eventually I'm gonna even delete this button, the on-off, which you don't need. Now the on-off uh, feature, the, the start pause, is attached to the chart itself, to the joystick. And next application, we will learn how to use this in some special cases. So we will make a little game to see, to prove you the utility of this uh, macro. And this being said, I will uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.